Hi, how are you doing today? I've been thinking about that warm weather all year long in the rainforest. Oh, I do love warm weather. But I'm not so sure I would enjoy all that rain. We've been learning a lot about the rainforest and the food chains that are needed for survival of all those living things. I cannot imagine what would happen if the links in the chain were missing. We're going to read more about the rainforest and the food chains. Maybe we'll see some ideas to help the food chain survive. We're also going to be using some reading strategies as we use this text. So get your journal and your pen so that when we apply these reading strategies, you'll be able to mark down and write down what's going to help you and what's what helps you understand the text. You may even come up with some questions you want to jot down. We are learning to explain the interactions between two or more individuals or events in a scientific text based on specific information in that text. We will be successful when we discuss the interactions between the individuals or events. We are also learning to determine two or more main ideas of a text and explain how they are supported by key details. We will be successful when we can identify the main ideas and explain those key details that support the main ideas in conversation and discussion. Let's read. What are rainforest food chains like around the world? Rainforest habitats share many features, but they are not all the same. Species adapt to their specific habitat. Rainforest food chains differ from one part of the world to another. The Amazon Rainforest The Amazon River Basin is home to the largest rainforest in the world. It stretches from Peru to eastern Brazil. The area contains almost half of the tropical rainforest habitat left in the world. Nearly 40,000 plant species have been found here. The Amazon rainforest also boasts the most species of birds, butterflies, and freshwater fish on earth. A two-toed sloth rests on a branch in Costa Rica. Aw, isn't it sweet? Jaguars prowl the forest floor looking for prey. I need to move my picture. Hold on just a minute. There we go. Harpy eagles swoop down from above to tear into reptiles sunning on rocks. Two-toed sloths blend in with the dense vegetation. Colorful scarlet macaws squawk from their treetop perches. Primates, such as marmosets, live in the lush understory of the Amazon. Tiny pygmy marmosets are the world's smallest monkeys. They grow to only 13 centimeters, 5 inches, long. Marmosets feed on lizards, spiders, and insects, as well as tree sap and fruit. Poison dart frogs have a unique defense against predators. The colorful frogs release toxins, poison, from their skin. Predators that try to gobble up poison dart frogs get a painful and sometimes deadly surprise. Hmm. Ouch. Let's read the caption. This pygmy marmoset lives on the trees in a rainforest in Brazil. It's cute too, isn't it? Hmm. Okay, so I want you to look at the second paragraph on this page. This paragraph right here. And let's reread it. And then I want you to decide, what do you think the main idea of just this paragraph is? So let's read it again. Primates such as marmosets live in the lush understory of the Amazon. Tiny pygmy, pygmy marmosets are the world's smallest monkeys. They grow to only 13 centimeters, five inches long. Marmosets feed on lizards, spiders, and insects, as well as tree sap and fruit. Hmm. So, I'm thinking that the main idea of this paragraph must be the primates' marmosets. 
because I see marmosets mentioned in every single sentence except for this one. And they're still referred to because it says they referring to the pygmy marmosets. This paragraph's main idea must be marmosets. Good job. Hmm. I want you to read this paragraph, the third paragraph. What would you say the main idea of that paragraph is? Why would you say that? Good answer. I like how you're thinking. Let's go on. A broken chain. Oh no. Losing the Amazon. The Amazon is an important part of the planet. It is home to plants that can treat disease and save lives. Many animals found here cannot survive anywhere else, but the Amazon rainforest is disappearing. Farmers cut down and burn the edges of the rainforest to make room for crops and animals. Scientists say that more than half of the Amazon rainforest could be gone by 2030. Oh my goodness, that's only 10 years from now. Many plants and animals here are at risk of dying out. Based on this text, what human activity is endangering the Amazon rainforest? That's right, the text said that farmers cut down and burn the edges of the rainforest. And why are they doing that? That is correct. It also said that they're making room for crops and animals. Hmm. But we see that other things are being hurt because of it. I wonder if we would call that progress. Let's go on. The African rainforest. The African rainforest is the second largest in the world. It follows the path of Africa's Congo River. Half of all the animal species in Africa live in the rainforest. Many of the producers here have practical uses. Coffee plants grow in the shade of tall trees. Local people harvest the pods of cacao trees to make chocolate. Wood from tall mahogany trees is used to make furniture and flooring. African oil palms produce oil for soap, chocolate, and other products. The African rainforest is home to many primates, including lowland gorillas, chimpanzees, and bonobos. Bonobos, like chimps, are close relatives to humans. They feed on fruits, nuts, mushrooms, and sometimes rodents or small antelopes. Bonobos are found in the Congo and nowhere else on earth. Other rainforest mammals include forest elephants, hippopotamuses, and okapi. The okapi, a relative of the giraffe, lives only in the African rainforest. Okapis eat fruits, plants, and fungi. African elephants are one of the world's largest land animals. Adults eat up to 136 kilograms or 300 pounds of roots, fruits, grass, and bark each day. Look at the food chain. Stink leaves provide nourishment and energy for black and white colobus monkeys, which provide energy for the crowned hawk eagle, which provides energy for bacteria, and then back again through the chain. This food chain shows one way plants and animals are consumed in the African rainforest. I wonder how that's similar and different than the food chains we had seen before. It's very similar, right? It started with plants and then we have the primary consumer and then the secondary consumer and then it went back to bacteria, you're right, which is what? The decomposer. Very good. Losing a link, disappearing rainforests. The African rainforest is disappearing 
and along with it, many primate species. Farming and road building are wiping out vast areas of land. Despite laws against it, some people still hunt and eat primates. About 90% of the African rainforest is gone already. What will happen to the primates? Gentle giants. You might assume gorillas are tough predators. Think again. These powerful creatures look fierce, but are actually quite gentle. They only strike out when threatened. Gorillas are mostly herbivores that eat leaves, shoots, and fruits. A chimpanzee crouches in the West African rainforest. Aww, he looks kind of sad, but he almost looks cuddly too, doesn't he? Southeast Asian rainforest. In Southeast Asia, you will find the oldest rainforests in the world. These rainforests are not large expanses like those of the Amazon and Congo river basins. Thailand, Malaysia, and Myanmar, Burma, have smaller areas of the rainforest. Sumatra, Borneo, New Guinea, and the Philippines also contain patches of rainforest. This is because the landscape contains many islands and because of human development. All plants are producers, but some plants do double duty as secondary consumers or carnivores. Pitcher plants have bowl-shaped parts that trap insects or other animals. The insect falls in or is lured in by sweet nectar. Then the pitcher plant takes in nutrients from the dead insect. Some pitcher plants in Southeast Asia lure in animals as large as rats. Orangutans swing through the jungle, jungles of Sumatra and Borneo. The shaggy red-haired apes spend most of their time in the understory. They munch on fruits, nuts, and bark. Sometimes birds' eggs are termite or termites make tasty snacks for orangutans. About 50,000 orangutans remain in the wild. They are at risk of dying out. Small lemurs live only on the island of Madagascar. They live in the trees and use their long furry tails for balance. Some lemurs eat insects, while most eat leaves and fruit. This food chain links organisms in the Southeast Asian rainforest. Let's see if it's similar to the other um, food chains we have seen. Durian fruit, oh guys, that's a plant, is giving energy to the fruit fly, the primary consumer, which then gives energy to the pitcher plant. Remember a pitcher plant would also be a carnivore, that's right. And then it would give energy to bacteria, and then it would go back through. I think it's very similar, isn't it? What was different? Yes, I would say the secondary consumer was different. It didn't talk about the great big animals, the cats that we had mentioned earlier. It's talking about a plant, a pitcher plant. Good job. This Wallace flying frog is found in the rainforest of the island of Borneo. A broken chain, Borneo. The island of Borneo, which is a, lot, is a bit larger than the state of Texas, has an amazing number of species. About 15,000 species of plants are found here. Borneo's rainforest is the world's tallest. Many flying animals, from frogs and lizards to snakes and squirrels, fling themselves from tree to tree here. Today, less than half of Borneo's rainforest remains. Forest fires, logging, and farming have destroyed much of this unique habitat. As we've been reading, I've noticed the author has provided quite a 
bit of interesting information about particular animals that are a part of the food chains. But then the blue file tabs have shown how there are broken links in the food chains. That makes me sad. I don't like the broken chains, but I'm seeing there are more of those broken files added on our, in our information. Why do you think the author has presented the interesting facts about the different species that are participants in the food chains? How does that information connect with the author presenting the damage that is happening to the food, to the rainforest food chains? I agree. I believe the author is using the interesting information to not only inform us about the animals, but also to show us how important they are to the food chains. That captures our attention and helps us to have empathy for the animals. I even see this cute little flying frog and it's like, how could someone endanger it? It just breaks my heart. I am having empathy, showing emotion because I don't want that little animal to be endangered because its home is being destroyed. Hmm, I wonder why the author is doing that. Let's read on. How are humans harming rainforest food chains? Here we go again. I think the author is trying to tell us something. All over the world, rainforest food chains are in trouble. Human activity has already wiped out half of Earth's rainforests. Rainforests once covered 14% of Earth. Now they cover only 6%. Yet the rainforest is still home to half the species on Earth. Why should we protect these special habitats? Rainforests house many rare plants and animal species. Many rainforest organisms cannot be found anywhere else on Earth. Some plant species can help treat or cure disease. When these species disappear, we lose chances to save lives. Let's read the caption up here above the rainforest. Rainforest plants absorb carbon dioxide and give off oxygen. We need oxygen. That tells me these plants are really important. Let's read the green box. Lungs of the earth. Rainforests are like the lungs of the planet. They give off oxygen that humans and other animals need to breathe. They also act as a carbon sink. Rainforest vegetation absorbs carbon dioxide gas. Otherwise, carbon dioxide would build up and trap heat, creating global warming. Global warming puts many species, including humans, at risk. So what can we say on this page makes rainforests so important? Good job, let's go on. Burning can destroy areas of rainforest. Habitat, habitat loss. From South America to Southeast East Asia, rainforests are disappearing fast. Every minute an area of rainforest the size of 50 football fields disappears. Logging, farming, road building, and wars have led to widespread habitat loss. Cities and towns have taken over land that was once rainforest. Clear cutting is a farming practice in which land is cleared completely. This process destroys native plant species. Another poor farming practice is slash and burn farming. First, farmers harvest whatever wood they can. Then, 
They burn the rest of the land to make way for crops or grazing animals. All these activities end up killing plants and forcing animals to find a new home. But where will these animals go? They are pushed into smaller and smaller areas of land. There, they must compete for fewer resources. Rainforests at risk. Many rainforests are at risk from mining. Rainforests contain many substances that are valuable to humans, such as gold, copper, and nickel. But mining operations release lots of waste. This harmful waste pollutes the air and water. It can harm or even kill plants and animals living nearby. The effects of pollution last for a long time. It is hard or even impossible to clean up polluted land. Let's read the caption. Mines such as this one are responsible for destroy, polluting and destroying rainforests. A Broken Chain, Sapo National Park. One area especially at risk from mining and hunting is Sapo National Park. This park is in the African country of Liberia. It is the second largest rainforest in West Africa, but there are not enough park rangers to protect the park. People illegally hunt forest elephants and pygmy hippopotamus there. They clear the forest for grazing cattle and for growing crops. Some mine for gold and diamonds in the park. Many species that live in Sapo National Park are in danger including chimpanzees and colobus monkeys. Disappearing primates. Hunting threatens many rainforest species. Primates such as chimps and lowland gorilla are now endangered. Fewer than 100,000 chimpanzees remain in the world. There are between 172,000 and 300,000 lowland gorillas, the type of gorilla that lives in tropical rainforests. In parts of Africa, people illegally hunt primates for food. Their flesh is called bushmeat. The growth of towns and tourism also can affect the health of gorillas. People who come in contact with gorillas can pass on diseases to them. Primates are our closest living relatives. Humans have much to learn from them. If they die out, we will lose a valuable link to ourselves. Humans can pass on diseases to primates such as gorillas. I would not want to make that little fella sick. A small area of rainforest was cleared for this cattle pasture. The land is beautiful, but it's really sad that all of the, the underbrush and the canopy and all of the trees and all of the vegetation were torn, torn down, maybe even burned so that they could graze their cattle there. Hope for the future. What will happen to the rainforest? Their fate is in human hands. There is some good news. In some places, the rainforest is growing back. About 350,000 square kilometers, or 135,000 square miles, of rainforest is growing back around the world. Scientists have noted that the canopy fills in after about 15 years. This gives hope for the future. The regrowth is due mainly to changing patterns of human life. In places such as Panama and parts of the Congo, more people are moving into cities. They are leaving behind farms grown on former rainforest land. On these empty patches of land, the rainforest is taking over once more. Dense vegetation is filling in spaces where cattle once grazed or coffee once grew. Birds and other creatures are making a new home in this habitat. But the new rainforest is not the same as it once was. 
The species that have died out can never come back. Old growth rainforests, ones with very old trees, take in more carbon dioxide and give off more or oxygen than regrown forests. Because of this, they are better at slowing global warming. Still, it is hopeful news. More land means hope for many rainforest plants and animals. If the new rainforest is to thrive and grow, people must protect it. The future of the rainforest is up to us. Made in the rainforest. The rainforest is home to many plants with practical uses. These plants make our lives easier, tastier, and more fun. Rubber, Brazil nuts, coffee, chocolate, cinnamon, and vanilla are just a few rainforest products. Think about what life would be like without those things. Parts of the Bunyan Mar Mountains rainforest in Queensland, Australia that were once logged have regrown. What can you do to protect the rainforest food chains? The rainforest supplies oxygen to the plant. It is home to many amazing species of plants and animals. If you or someone you love gets sick, rainforest plants might provide a treatment or cure. Today, the rainforest needs your help. What can you do to help protect it? Support conservation groups. People all over the world are working to preserve the rainforest. Support conservation groups that put money and research toward the problems facing the rainforest. Groups like the World Wildlife Fund work hard every day to prevent illegal hunting, fishing, and farming in the rainforest. This zoo worker tries to give medicine to a sick orangutan that was illegally smuggled out of a rainforest. It is important to support people who live in or near rainforests. Help all rainforest dwellers. Hippopotamuses and tapirs are not the only creatures that dwell in the rainforest. People make their home there too. Millions of people across the world depend on rainforests for food and shelter. Sometimes these people do not have enough to eat. This drives them to hunt endangered animals or to chop down forests to grow crops or graze animals. It is important to help the people of the rainforest too. Without their help, the rainforest will not survive. Fuels from fungus? Gasoline is a major source of pollution, but it is hard to find a substitute. Now, scientists have discovered one substance that might work. A type of tree fungus can turn plant matter into fuel. The fungus grows in the rainforest of Papagonia at the tip of South America. Scientists think this might be a good source of renewable energy. Renewable energy is clean fuel from sources that do not run out, such as sunshine or wind. The fungus could grow in labs or in factories. It might help lessen our dependence on gasoline. Kids can make a difference. Emmanuel Antonio, Costa Rica, kids are working together to protect the rainforest. Kids Saving the Rainforest is a conservation group founded by two school children. In 1998, two nine-year-old girls decided to sell painted rocks to raise money for the local rainforest. More than 10 years later, the group is still going strong. Today, the organization works to preserve rainforests and save endangered local monkeys. Kids Saving the Rainforest built an animal shelter to care for injured animals. The group releases the healthy animals back into the wild. Students who volunteer with the group help build monkey bridges. These bridges are built across roads in Manuel Antonio. They help monkeys cross the road without getting hit by cars. 
Students around the world can get involved in the group by raising money or asking local businesses to sponsor a monkey or rainforest tree. Like many children all over the world, these children in Palo Alto, California, work to support kids saving the rainforest. Buy sustainable and fair trade products. Ask your parents to buy rainforest products such as bananas, chocolate, and coffee that are grown sustainably. Sustainable products are grown in a way that does not harm the rainforest. Also, ask your parents to make sure your furniture and flooring comes from sustainable wood. Look for wood from certified sustainable forests. Another label to look for is fair trade. Fair trade products are made in ways that are less harmful to the environment. Fair trade also means the person who buys or grows the product is paid a fair price. And spread the word. Learn as much as you can about the amazing plants and creatures that live in the rainforest and take steps to protect them. Then share your knowledge with people you know. Together, we can make a difference. This woman harvests a fair trade coffee crop. It is important to buy fair trade products when possible. Top 10 things you can do to protect rainforests. There are lots of things you can do to protect rainforest food chains and habitats. Here are 10 to start with. One, reduce, Reuse and recycle. Save trees. Use as little paper as possible. When you use paper, make sure it is recycled. Two, write a letter to a conservation group to thank it for what it does or write to a group harming the rainforest and tell it to stop. Three, hold a bake sale or raffle. Raise money for conservation groups such as the World Wildlife Fund or the Rainforest Conservation Fund. 4. Ask your parents to buy sustainably grown rainforest products. Sustainable products are grown or produced in ways that do not harm rainforests. 5. Buy organic food if possible. Pesticide use harms rainforests and habitats everywhere. At home or on vacation, this is six, don't feed the animals. Animals adapt to their habitat. Feeding them people food throws off their diet and could make them sick. Seven, let wild animals stay wild. Don't buy rainforest fish, monkeys, or birds to keep as pets. These animals belong in the rainforest. They are a key part of the rainforest food chain. Eight, support the people who live in the rainforest. They need your help too. They depend on the rainforest for food and shelter. Nine, get smart. Learn as much as you can about rainforests. Tell your friends and family what you have learned. And 10, Write an article in your school newspaper telling about how they can protect rainforests. Why do you think the author included the top 10 things you can do to protect rainforests in this text? After the, reading this text, how do you think the author feels about the rainforest food chains? And why do you think that? As we read this text, the author began providing information about the rainforest and then continued with information about the food, ch food chains in the rainforest. She also emphasized how important each link is to the survival of all of the participants. She also began providing informa information about how those links were beginning to become broken and what was causing them to break. She used our thinking and our reasoning skills to understand the facts. And then she used our emotions to enhance empathy for each of the participants of the food chain. As we think about the strategies she used, how would you implement some strategies to inform and possibly persuade your readers 
about a topic you are passionate about. This is a glossary. The glossary is a great tool to use when there are words in an informational text that you are not sure what they mean, especially in the context of the writing. By looking for the word in the glossary, you will be able to identify the author's intended meaning for the word. Do you see any words in the glossary that you noticed as we were reading? By looking at for the word in the glossary, they're listed alphabetically. You will be able to identify the author's intended meaning for the word. Why do you think the author included a page titled Find Out More? Let's look at some of some of the text and see if that helps us. It provides books about a rainforest habitat and how children helped a rainforest and how to explore the rainforest. Then it has websites about rainforests and saving the rainforest, how to travel in the rainforest. Then it also gives you more information that you can look at to help you do research about the rainforest and, and the different food chains there. Hmm, interesting. We also have an index. The index is really important and it's really nice that the author provided an index, especially in this informational text that has a lot of words and topics. An index is important because it identifies specific topics someone might be interested in and tells what pages that particular topic is mentioned on in the text. An index is especially helpful when you want to find specific information about a specific topic. Well, fifth graders, we have finished that book. I am thinking the author really wanted to get a message across to us, the readers. What do you think that message is? I agree. So what do you think humans can do to protect rainforest food chains? Hmm, which do you think would be the most important and the most effective? Go back in the text, especially on page 44, and write your answers. Fifth graders, you are awesome. Continue to apply those reading skills, and next time we will be comparing and contrasting two different texts, the rainforest food chains, and yes, the book we read before. See you then.